have you ever had this kind of experience when you are preparing uh, scriptures or uh, you preparing the um, Bible study for sharing with someone or you might preparing a sermon to peace in the church and then suddenly God start to preach those messages or teach those messages into your life. I am one of them. Really, I um, prepared this sermon about penitence or repentance. God start to teach me about penitence and I have start to have tears and I believe that that tear is cleanses my soul. Let's see the definition of the penitence. Pen penitence means the actions of feeling or showing sorrow or regret of having done wrongs. And penance in the Catholic tradition, the sacrament of reconciliation by which the penitent person is reconciled to God and the church through the forgiveness of sins. Often, such reconciliation comes after the penitent sinner performs some prescribed act as an indication of repentance. So, in this sermon, I would like to say that penitence is like equal to the repentance. What God have convicted into my heart to teach this sermon? I believe that He wants to teach me in order that I can receive the truly meaning of penitence or repentance into my life because I can be even the giving the true understanding to the other people. I believe this is the place of the anointing come from because the word of God become to live and be and live into my life. I receive it first, well, then I can give it to you. Okay, let's talk about what God speak to me during I prepare these sermons. During prepare this sermon, I start to have a sin that I need to forgive. I have a sin of judging one of my friends. I have a sin of not being able to love her. I have a sin that I, I have kind of like a heading emotion to her for her actions. And then I suddenly start to feel sorry about that because I know that that sin of unforgiven is blocking me to get close to the Lord. That sin is hindering me to come and closer to the Lord because God is holy. I need to be holy. However, I know that the Holy Spirit is convicted these sins into my heart. I start to feel sorry because I didn't want to go away from the presence of God. I want to be at the feet of Jesus. I want to be close to Him. However, I have committed sins and I start to feel sorry to God and I start to pray to God, God, I am forgive. Forgive me, God. I want to give these sins of unforgiven to my friend away from me. And I want to receive your forgiveness. I want to pray the prayer that I forgive my friend by the grace of God. I want to pray that God, I forgive her at the grace that you have given to me on the cross. I want more of your grace then I can give it to her. And then after I pray that, my tears start to come up from my eyes. And then I feel that I receive the answer of prayer. I receive that salvation into my life. I start to love her into my heart by the grace of God and pouring into my life. So this testimony, I have the full step of repentance or penitence. First, I have sins and Holy Spirit convert into my heart. Second, I start to feel sorry about that sin because I know that the sin is hindering me to get and come closer to the Lord. Number three, I start to repentance. 
I start to turn and make a U-turn from what I feel about her, what I cannot love her, to be able to love her by the love of God that put into my life. And then I ask God, and then the last step, I receive that. When I ask God, I receive that. When I ask whatever the will of God, I feel that I receive that. So this is the step of repentance that I understand. I believe that repentance is kind of the exchange. We are exchanging something with God. It exchanging the sins with the peace, with the forgiveness. We exchange with our rebellion and separation with the forgiveness and abundant life and eternal life with God. Let's look into the meaning of the repentance together. Repentance in Hebrew, it means turn or return. In this picture, you can see that they turn away from sins or death and turn into the salvation or turn into God. So turn away from evil and turn to God. This is the meaning of repentance. In the meaning of the Greek, they use the word metanonia. It means a change of mind, or it means regret or remorse. So in the repentance process, it includes the brokenness. It includes the sorrow. It includes regret or remorse and change of mind. We don't want to be the same as we are. We know that we are dead, and we want to get a life of Jesus into our life. That is one of the steps of the process of repentance. So, I, let me conclude again for four steps of repentance. I believe we start from the sin that we did and the Holy Spirit that convict those sin into our heart. Number two, we start to feel sorry about that. We start to have the broken neck. We cry out. We regret about the sin that we did because we know that the sin is hinder us to get Cross to God. Number three is we repent and we want to turn and make a U turn, turn from evil to God. And then the last step is the salvation. We receive, we receive the grace of God into our life. We receive the healing, we receive the freedom, and we receive the joy of the Lord into our life. Is that good? Do you want to exchange that? You want to exchange your sins with the love of God. You want to exchange the love of God with anything else? I don't think so. We want to have the love of God that we will live a life of security in our life. An abundant life, an eternal life. That is a good trait. However, let's see about the motivations of the repentance. If we look into the scripture of the John chapter 8 about the woman that caught in adultery. If you remind about this story, you will understand that what is the repentance process that it looked like. Let's see the example of Jesus himself that how can he help people? How can he help a sinner, an adultery woman to repent? From this scripture, Jesus Jesus went into the, um, he turned to the Mount of Olive, but early to the next morning, he was back again at the temple, and a crowd soon gathering, and he sat down and tossed them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religion and of law and Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. The teachers, they said to Jesus, This woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law Moses says to stone her. What do you say, Jesus? They were trying to trap Jesus into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stood down and right in the dust with his fingers. He kept demanding an answers. They kept the Pharisee keep demanding an answers. So he stood up against 
and said, all right, but let no one had ever, had never since throw the first stone. He asked, Jesus asked a profound question to the people. Let the one who has never since throw the first stone. Do you believe that anyone never since before? This is a profound question that Jesus asked them. Then he stood down again and wrote the dust. When the accusers heard these questions, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. You see, even Pharisees or the teacher, they left because everyone is a sinner. There is only one man on the earth who have never sinned before. This is Jesus. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? And the woman answered, No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I go and sin no more. Did you can learn about the motivation of repentance. I believe the woman received that kind of conviction into her heart. She received the goodness of God that gave her an opportunity to not be to not to be stoned. And this is how he demonstrated about the motivation of repentance for us to become Jesus into the world as well. If you want to help the people of the sinner to repent from the sins. This is what we can learn from Jesus, how he did that. He convict. He didn't lie to the people. He didn't lie to women that you are not sin. It's okay to have an adult license. He didn't say that. What did he say? He said the truth with love. He said, go and sin no more. This is the motivation of sin that we can learn from Jesus. And we can be Jesus to the world and let the world repent from their sins. Let me see the example of the Celtic Christians' practice. The Celtic have a good practice of repentance as well. They, number one, the awareness of the capacity of the sin that they might make as a human natures, the sinful natures. Second, they have the conscience of human natures of imperfect. We are not perfect. Number three, they know that they need the grace of God into their life. And the last one, that's why they search of healing and forgiveness and resolution of the burden of guilt and sins in their life. So the repentance of penance in the life of the Celtic Christian is like a medicine of their souls. Let's look into the scripture, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. It said then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked dead ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land. This is the beauty of God who always have options to us to forgive us Whenever that we are humble, we are praying and we are seeking to reconcile with Him. We are seeking to turn away from our evil things and turn to God. He hears us and He forgives us and He restores the relationship back with Him again. Is it a beautiful? Is a beautiful relationship with Him? So you can see that the the. Celtic Christianity also have the penance. That is the fourth step of the Celtics. The Celtic also knowing that they have sins. And second, they sorrow about the sin that they did. And number three, they penance or repentance for the sin. And the last step, they receive help or they receive the healing from the Lord. So this is aligned with the scripture, aligned with the process of sin. So I think that we can also learn from Celtic practice to repent. I have 
the story to end it up for this summer. I went to Chiang Mai. I have an appointment with a pastor at the coffee shop on the highway. However, I drive past to that location. Then I need to make a U-turn. Is it the U-turn? Is the viral? Yes, it it is a viral. But as I said, the coffee shop located in on the highway road. So the high U turn is a while but it's so far away. So I need to make go to one way to make a U turn, and then I need to make another U turn, and coming back to the location that I need to be. I took about twenty minutes to reach the destinations. However, God teach me something about that, and it's very beautiful. I learned number one. I can always make a mi mistake. I am not perfect. Number two, I learned that the U-turn is always a viable for me. It's always a viable trap for me. Number three, however, even I can make a U-turn, some U-turn might be very short, right? but some U-turn like what I did is very long. It takes 20 minutes. So, there is sometimes there is a consequence of the thing that we make a mistakes, mistakes, and it might take a long way before we can reach the destination. But the last one, the good news is, we will eventually reach the destinations. Just turn away from whatever that we mistake and turn back to God. He is there for us, and He's He is always available for us. And he will help us and be with us to list the destination. God bless you.